This is the video on comets, asteroids, and meteors for Mr. Thompson, Ms. Turner's, and Ms. Sneed's classes. So please make sure that you have your Cornell notes on comets, asteroids, and meteors to fill out as we go through the PowerPoint. So the first area we are going to cover is comets. Comets are also called dirty snowballs because they are chunks of ice and dust whose orbits are usually very long and very narrow ellipses. And remember an ellipse is the shape of an oval. It is not a circle shape. So the comets are the pieces of ice and dust that are still out in space that are traveling around the sun and we call them the dirty snowballs uh, for this reason. The energy from the sun uh, while the comet is going around the sun turns the ice into gas which releases dust because we know ice is frozen water and as it heats up it will turn into gas and that releases the dust trapped inside of the ice. The comet always moves towards the sun so that means the tail always faces away from the sun. So the front part of the comet is always facing the sun as it's going around the sun so the tail is facing away from the sun because the tail is the ice and that is melting and releasing the gas is what the tail looks like. So that causes the ice to burn up as the comet moves towards the sun. So we have different parts of the comet. There are four parts to the comet. We have the nucleus which is the inner layer of the comet. We have the coma which is the dust and gas outer layer part of the comet. We have the comet's head which is the nucleus Dr. and the coma. The comet's head is the nucleus and the coma put together and the tail is the gas and the dust part of the comet. So you can see all four of those in your picture as well. The nucleus, the coma, the tail and then the head is both the nucleus and the coma put together. The second object we have in space are the asteroids. Most of the asteroids revolve around the sun between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. So if you remember from the video that we saw today, that is the place where scientists think either a planet was supposed to form but something happened where it didn't or a planet was there and it exploded and all the little pieces are now floating in between Mars and Jupiter. So these are all the big chunks of the rocks that did not form into the planets and though they are found in between those two planets. This is known as the asteroid belt. So when we talk about the asteroid belt, this is the area between Mars and Jupiter. The next object we have are the meteoroids. And if you remember, asteroid is in space. A meteoroid is also in space. These are the chunks of rocks or dust in space. So they are smaller than the asteroid and a little bit larger than the comet. And they usually come from the comets or the asteroids. So these are pieces of one or the other that are still floating around in space and has broken off from one or the other. So again, remember, asteroid is in space and a meteoroid is in space. We change the name to a meteor when the meteoroid enters the Earth's atmosphere. Friction makes it burn up and produce a streak of light called a shooting star. So all the shooting stars that we see in the sky, these are called meteors if we use the term correctly in astronomy. So again, this is when the meteoroid enters the Earth's atmosphere and friction makes them burn, burn up and we produce the streak of light called the shooting star. So shooting stars are not comets, they are meteors. We change its name again to a meteorite if the meteoroid enters the Earth's atmosphere and makes it through the atmosphere without burning up and actually strikes the surface of the Earth. So they are the meteoroids that come through our atmosphere 
and have not burned up and they will leave a crater on the surface of the earth much like the picture that you see on your Cornell notes so again remember meteoroid is the one that's still in space meteor is the one that has come through our atmosphere and is burning up and is called the shooting star and a meteorite is the one that makes it through our atmosphere and actually strikes the surface of the earth and it can also strike the surface of the moon and other objects that are in space so please make sure that you have your Cornell notes done you have the five sentence summary and make sure that you have this done by Thursday to use these in class for our next set of lab station activities have a good night and we will see you in class